we now actually want to use the harmonic identities to do something. And I said one of the things we're going to use it for is solving equations, and the other thing is going to be about finding maximum and minimum points without having to use differentiation. So we're going to try and solve equations using the harmonic identity. And first of all, it says put that thing into that form and then hence solve the equation. Well, I want to start off by looking at this equation to try and explain why we even need the harmonic identity. So my equation is 2 cos theta plus 5 sine theta equals 3. Now, we actually can't solve this with the skills that we have currently got. Okay, we don't, can't solve this. What might we have thought that we would try and do? Let's say if it wasn't equal to 3, if it was equal to 0, we can solve that one. How would we solve that one? You would divide by cos theta. If I divided this by cos theta, I would divide this by cos theta. And 0 divided by cos theta is just 0. So I would have 2 plus 5 tan theta equals 0. So tan theta is minus 2 over 5. So that's how you would do it if it was equal to 0. But when it's not equal to 0, it becomes a different kind of question. Our one is equal to 3. Now, if I tried to do 3 divided by cos theta, because I would have to divide everything by cos theta, I would have 2, because the cos thetas would cancel, plus 5 tan theta equals 3 over cos theta is sec theta. And no longer can I solve that one using the same pattern. So I could do some squaring and some things like that. But actually, that's going to be messier than just using the harmonic identity. So your skill is going to be, when you come across an equation, to say to yourself, how can I solve this? And one of the new things that you might be able to use to solve the equation is the harmonic identity. So that's a bit of background about why we have to use the harmonic identity for this. So we're going to go nice and quick for this beginning bit. We've got 2 cos theta plus 5 sine theta. And we're going to try and put it in the form of r cos of theta minus alpha. So I'm going to do the expansion of r cos theta minus alpha, which is r cos theta cos alpha plus r sine theta sine alpha, which means that r cos alpha is what? Two. Two. r sine alpha is five. So r is the square root of 2 squared plus 5 squared, which is root 29, because 4 plus 25 is 29. And tan alpha is sine alpha over cos alpha, which is 5 over 2. And so alpha is the inverse tan of 5 over 2. Are we in degrees or radians mode? Good. So put your calculator back in degrees mode, and we will do the inverse tan of 5 over 2. Now, alpha is 68.1985 blah, blah, blah degrees. I wouldn't round this too heavily here because I'm going to need to use it when solving equations. So probably what I would say for alpha is I would say it's 68.199 degrees. That's probably enough decimal points to be able to keep the degree of accuracy that I'm likely to need in this question. OK? So this tells me that. 2 cos theta plus 5 sine theta is r root 29 cos theta minus 68.199 degrees. And then there's no part b, but effectively the second half of this question says solve the equation 2 cos theta plus 5 sine theta equals 3. We just said we can't solve that equation. But I know that 2 cos theta plus 5 sine theta can be replaced with this thing that I've just worked out. So instead of solving 2 cos theta plus 5 sine theta equals 3, which I cannot solve, I'm going to replace this with this. I'm going to do root 29 cos theta minus 68.199 degrees equals 3. Now, it looks messy, but really, this is just a cos equation that we've got here. The cos equation, yeah, the argument has been changed, and it's been multiplied by root 29. 
but it is literally just a cos equation here. So, a couple of things to do. First of all, the theta, the argument has been changed from theta. So I'm also going to change the range as well. My range is that theta is between 0 and 360, but I want it to be theta minus 68.199. So I'm going to subtract 68.199 from the range. Two hundred and ninety one point eight zero one. So that's my range I'm going to be looking out for anything between this and this. First step I need to do to this equation. Divide by root twenty nine. So then I get that theta minus sixty eight point one nine nine is the inverse cos of that three divided by root twenty nine. And the inverse cos of 3 divided by root 29 is 56.1 degrees. How do you find the other one with cos? 360 minus you do 360 minus that. And when I do 360 minus that, or in fact, I, I should have written a few more decimals there. So I'm going to write a, a little bit extra. I'm going to write 56.145. And the other one, when I do 360 minus, is 303.855. And that doesn't fit inside the range. So what can I do to this one to make it fit inside the range? I'm going to minus 360 from it. Remember, you can minus 360 or add 360 to any of them. So I get minus 56.145 degrees. And then I've got that one that is inside the range. There's no point in adding 360 to this one because it would then go outside of the range. So I can't use this one, but I can use these ones that I've got here. So all I need to do to find out theta is the final step of adding 68.199 to those answers. So 68.199, if I add it to this other answer I've got here, I get 12.05 or 12.1 degrees to one decimal place. And then the other one, if I do 56.145 plus that, six, sorry, 56.145 plus 68.199, I get 124.3 degrees. And I've done both of these answers to one decimal place. So all we did is we did the harmonic identity on this thing I've highlighted in yellow. We replaced the harmonic identity in the equation. Sorry, we replaced the non-harmonic with the harmonic identity bit here. And then we just started solving the equation in the same way that we have been before. So you're going to do some of those practice questions for me for homework where you're just using the harmonic identity.